So my YouTube channel was recently hacked. It was completely taken over and 10 plus years of work was gone. But I've since got it back, I'm completely under control. And there's one thing we know to be true. They cannot stop me. Listen, if you were scrolling YouTube today thinking, boy, I sure hope I don't see a pincer absolutely go the hell off today. Well, you should probably turn around because, well, I mean, you'll see. We are back with another Wi-Fi battle, and today we've got a match against a team that is quite defensive and honestly pretty damn scary. I have to deal with the Swampert, which my team hates. There's a Fortress, there's a Bastiodon, and a Vileplume. So a couple thick boys, uh, but I do believe in the squad, so let's get into it. So from the start, I was actually expecting them to want to lead with the Fortress. It seemed like the obvious play, so I decided to lead off with my Puthy and try to get a little switcheroo action going. You know, give it some, some choice specs and make it useless. However... I look like an idiot because they end up uh, leading with Swampert instead, and of course, you know, I can't really do too much with that, so I decided to switch. Um, now, I could have gone into the Parasect, however, I decided to go into Slowbro just because I know that I win this matchup 1v1. Uh, I can likely get a Scald Burn if they decide to stay in a few turns, or if they decide to switch, something's gonna have to come into a Scald and get a pretty likely chance for a Burn. So, that's exactly what happens actually. He ends up switching into Young Walnut, which actually I named my Fortress, so. Maybe this dude knows the channel. Uh, but I go for the Scalds here, it does a nice little chunk, and just like I expected, I get the burn. So, look at the boy Paul, doing exactly what I need him to do. You can always count on this guy. He may be confused as shit most of the time and not know what's going on, but he's a reliable fella. So, um, now this is actually fine. I'm kind of expecting this thing to potentially set up some more hazards. I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna go right for the flamethrower. Uh, and hope that he doesn't expect that. However, it turns out he does and just ends up going right back into Swampert. My dude says, you know, that walnut play did not work out how I wanted it to, so we end up getting right back to where we started, and I hit that thing with a flamethrower that somehow this water-type hippo can summon flames from his body. I don't know. Did, no one can question Paul. He can just, he can just do it, okay? So I figured, you know what? I wasn't going to switch out before. I'm not switching out now. I'm going to stay in. Go right for another Scald here as he actually decides to Earthquake, obviously being defensive as shit. I take that super nicely, and I can fire a Scald off this, at this thing in return. I'm hoping for some burns. I could also switch into Parasect, um, but I don't really want the Fortress to come in against it, because even with as many Swords Dances as possible, uh, I'm not going to be able to scratch that fucking thing. So, trying to save the Parasect for like a guaranteed Spore later, I figure I'm just going to continue to stay in and tell Paul to just keep doing his thing, because he really doesn't have a great answer for the Slowbro. So, he ends up going into the Bastiodon now, thinking maybe he can get some Metal Burst action going, is what I imagine he's going to try to go for. But my pink ass does not care. I'm just going to stay in here and continue to go for my Scalds. Um, I'm really just trying to whittle down this man's walls with Slowbro as much as possible. Because that'll make it a whole lot easier on my uh, just kind of all-out offensive boys later on in the game. So I decide to stay in here, go for another Scald. If I can get this Bastiodon in range um, and potentially burnt, I could make my life just a ton easier. So I go for that extra Scald. He ends up instead going for the Roar. He says, I cannot deal with this Slowbro. So he just decides to just try something else. This ends up bringing in Muck, which is honestly not great. He's happy to come out and say sup, although he's not going to have a good time against a shield face ass steel type. So unless I had like something like Brick Break, but of course I do not on this one at least. So I'm thinking I should probably switch out here if he ends up deciding to go for a roar again. He can kind of just stir some shit up and maybe I get a better matchup. Uh, but I'm thinking he's probably going to try to switch it up at this point. I'm going to end up going into Titty Milk. Now, the reason for this is because I would like to get my Stealth Rock up. It's uh, going to really help on limiting switches. He has stuff like an Infernape. Uh, I would enjoy taking some Stealth Rock damage. Just in case potential Focus Sashes, you just you never know. So, he does actually end up going for a Metal Burst. So, that gives me a little bit of intel, kind of, on what this Bastiodon's about. And Titty Milk is now just out here bouncing my blue titties around, having a nice time. Call that a, uh, a Blueberry Milkshake, boy. So... Um, I'm just going to end up going for the Stealth Rock here. I don't really know what this thing wants to potentially do. If they switch, that's totally fine. They do end up actually switching out. And this allows them to bring in the Vileplume. This is arguably the worst Pokemon for me to deal with on this team. It's super defensive. I do not have any Fire types on this team, which you know is not great for me having to deal with both a Fortress and a Vileplume. Um, but this thing is worse because it can guarantee kind of setting something to sleep with Sleep Powder. And I kind of, it's going to be annoying to deal with. Unless I can get it like below half to the point where 
uh, it can easily be taken out later. So I decided to switch into Muck. Now the reason for this is because Sup's just kind of the guy who like, he looks like he could take a nice little nap here. I don't really need this thing awake for the rest of this match. Uh, it's not the most useful, so I figure if there's anything that has to be put to sleep and roofied here, it's probably going to be my boy. So Muck actually does have a really good matchup here because I resist both of this thing's stabs, plus I'm especially defensive as titties, so I should have... Uh, the ability to kind of force a switch here, and I'm expecting them to switch. I'm gonna switch myself as I decide to go into the Persian. So, hoping, I mean, even if he stays in, I know I can take at least one attack, but the Persian is here to try to stir some shit up and at least get some damage going, or potentially uh, get some switcheroo action. So, he actually ends up switching into the Fortress. So, I imagine this thing probably wants to come in rapid spin, or potentially set up spikes, or do whatever these annoying ass things do. So, uh, it comes in on some stealth rock and it's sitting at about half after burn damage. But I obviously don't have anything on this technician special attacking Persian to really do to it. Uh, but I can be like, hey, I look like you could use some glasses, bro. These are probably not your prescription, but go ahead and hold these. It is going to give him the pair of choice specs. I take the leftovers and now this makes it so Fortress will be stuck using Spike. So the spikes coming up is honestly annoying. I don't have any hazard control on this team. and It's something that kind of wrecks this squad, but... Um, you know, it, it's mostly hyper offensive and we can potentially work around it if I can get uh, these walls just broken down. So, I obviously don't really have much to do here with the Persian, especially without my choice specs. I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot of damage. And I know these spikes are going to be stacking up like a bunch of Legos. And I do not want Paul to come in on more than one set of Legos because that shit hurts a lot. So, I come in, I take the spikes and the stealth rock as he actually ends up switching. And it's going to be the Gengar. So, this kind of puts me in a little bit of loss of momentum here. Because I don't really have much that can switch into Gengar. This thing is an absolute beast. Um, but I do have Psychic on this Slowbro. And I'm thinking, do I either stay in and risk taking a Shadow Ball? Or I should probably switch. So I decide to end up going into the Mill Tank. That's expecting a Shadow Ball. I can come in on that for free. Potentially paralyze this thing. And then make it so I can outspeed it with a whole lot of other stuff. So... I bring in my flopping titties for the world to see once more, as the Gengar actually, to my surprise, ends up going for a Giga Drain. And with the damage from the Stealth Rock and the Spikes, I can actually take another one, so hey, that's actually pretty nice. You don't often see uh, Giga Drain on a Gengar. I guess it's decent coverage for ground types, um, but this thing hurts, hurts a lot regardless. And unless it has something like Focus Blast, I know that I can take another attack here. Actually, maybe Sludge Bomb kills at this range anyway, but I do not really have the re resources to kind of switch around here too much. So I decide to stay in. He unfortunately does have the Focus Blast. That absolutely obliterates my cow, and there's now milk all over the battlefield. But we must rebuild, even with the lack of calcium. So I get a free switch now, and I decide to go into Pinsir. And here is the exact moment where I realize Pinsir has a chance to sweep this man's entire team. Now, Choice Scarf Pinsir outspeeds Gengar, and I can kill it with an Earthquake. And then once I get a Moxie boost, I'm actually looking like I can take out a lot of the walls on this team. So I go for the Earthquake here, and of course Gengar is going to switch out because it's no longer levitating. Game Freak straight up ruined my boy, and he ends up going into the Swampert. So I'm hoping that potentially Earthquake is a two-hit KO here. After the Stealth Rock damage, EQ is not going to do quite enough to be able to knock this thing out because, of course, this man is working with the bulkiest fucking Pokemon in the entire world, and Pinsir's going to have to wait for later. But now that I realize that, hey... Once I whittle down the Vileplume and I believe the Swampert just a little bit, I can actually get Earthquake to sweep like almost everything. So that is now my objective. And now we are switching modes into um, just trying to do as much as I can to both Vileplume and the Swampert. As long as if Swampert came in after some Moxie boost, we'd actually be okay. But Pinsir is our absolute win condition and I must protect him at all costs. As you know, Dick Pinch must be protected. Dude's probably like fucking old enough to drink at this point. He's been on my channel forever. But uh, I come in on an avalanche on Slowbro. Of course, Slowbro can take literally any attack this thing wants to throw at me. And then I can whittle it down in return. So that is my exact plan. I go for the Psychic here. And I'm thinking maybe I get the Vileplume to switch in on a Psychic. He actually hasn't seen me use that move. And generally, you don't see Scald, Psychic, and Flamethrower coverage on Slowbros. Uh, but this one's got it just in case. But... Um, he actually ends up staying in. I do not get the satisfying Vileplume Psychic, which is unfortunate, but I do at least whittle down Swampy to the point where his young Swamp Pass is going to be destroyed uh, by Dick Pinch. So, and also, it's probably a sentence that's literally never been said in the history of ever. But I go for a Scald here, thinking I could just try to get a burn. Um, he's not going to switch into Vileplume, so I know that's a safe option, as he ends up going into the Fortress again, who is just looking scared over there. He's got my, my glasses on. He's like, I don't know... 
I can't see shit in these things, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put him out of his misery. As uh, the Scald knocks it close, and I believe the burn damage is gonna finish my dude off. So, this thing did set up a layer of spikes, but for the most part, we didn't allow the fortress to do a whole lot. The rapid spin did not happen. He does still have this stealth rock on his side of the field, so we're looking good. Uh, so now he goes into Vile Plume on the free switch. So he has five Pokemon left at this point. All we have down is the Fortress. So I decide to stay in here. I know that a Giga Drain likely kills me, but if he over predicts, that's a death sentence. But uh, he does instead just go for the Giga Drain and takes care of Paul. So Paul does not enjoy mushrooms. Although I think Vile Plume is like based off of a flower that smells like shit, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this dude's a mushroom. Um, but now I get a free switch into what I would like, and I'm thinking, okay, here's the plan. I go into Persian, I go for a, like a Hyper Beam, and whittle this thing down to the point where then I can knock it out with Pinsir, because I know an Earthquake from Pinsir should do a little less than half, and that's not even if I have an attack boost from Moxie. So, I'm gonna go ahead and decide to fire me laser at this thing, just to try to get as much damage as possible here. I know that I outspeed, and ordinarily, you know, Persian can't do much to a physically defensive Wild Plume. However, I absolutely beam the shit out of my dude. Without the choice specs, it doesn't quite knock it out, but it does exactly what I need it to do, and that is a whole shit ton of damage. And luckily for me, he actually finishes me off with a Sludge Bomb rather than Giga Drain. Um, the Giga Drain there actually would have been the better play, because it wouldn't have killed me the first turn, but I would have had to recharge, and then he would have got a whole bunch of health back. So, I uh, caught a little bit of a break on that one, and now it is time for Pinsir to come in and do his shit. Pinsir is an absolute threat, and this man is shaking in his boots. So, <laughs> I get hurt by... Both the Stealth Rock and the Spikes, which is absolutely tearing my dude up over here. Uh, but you only need a little bit of HP to let the Pinsir sweep. My dude is an absolute janitor for years, and he has mastered the art of sweeping this shit clean. Have you seen how shiny the floor is in this Wi-Fi battle room? Squeaky clean! That's because Pinsir. Um, so I go for the EQ. He ends up actually switching into the Bastiodon, who absolutely dies. Um, maybe he was expecting a bug move. Regardless, I get the EQ off. Moxie boost at plus one is going to now... I. I'm pretty sure allow me to basically knock out anything in this range. And I'm also faster than everything because I am Choice Scarfed, which I'm not sure he knows at this point, uh, but he didn't try going into either Gengar or the Infernape. So, kind of expected that Pinsir is going to be Scarfed. The late game Sweeper is an absolute monster, and this Swampert has absolutely no chance of living a plus one Earthquake at that range. So, that takes care of Swampert, and all of the, all of the damage that was done earlier to these absolute tanks is coming in handy now because it's just right in range for me to just pick them off one by one or pinch them off whichever you prefer so uh in comes gengar he's thinking maybe this thing isn't scarfed and maybe the fastest ghost type ever actually does outspeed but you my friend are mistaken and i will now absolutely i was gonna say pin i'm just shaking the ground i'm not pinching anything I'm pinching the ground perhaps but down goes the gengar and now the moxie boosts have absolutely got me to the point where this pincer could kind of take over the world. It's a good thing this thing doesn't exist in real life because we would all be at the mercy of this dick pinch, I swear to God. So <laughs> now in comes the Vile Plume, of course, after Stealth Rock and a shit ton of Moxies. There's literally, there's literally no chance. Pincer has never been set up to sweep quite like this in the history of ever. I mean, the, the, the Fortress kind of dodged a bullet there being knocked out earlier. He didn't have to face the wrath of the pincer. Because um, I, I guarantee you, he, his ass would have been would have been dead as hell. And we do know one thing for certain. This dude's dick may never recover. The damage is irreparable, <laughs> and his day is ruined. I truly cannot imagine a pinching of this magnitude, and honestly, I'm sorry. So the last Pokemon is going to be the Infernape, who does die honorably, and uh, that is going to take care of it. Potentially could have been Focus Sash. Uh, which would have saved his, his life, uh, but the Stealth Rock helped me out there. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the match, and I just had to upload this one because Pinsir has never, truly never gotten such a workout, and we love to see my dude thrive. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate you, and I will see you next time. Peace out.